Let's go. Here we go. Physical illness, sickness. It could be cancer. It could be Alzheimer's. It could be Parkinson's. It could be migraine headaches. How do you feel right now? No muy bien. <laughs> it doesn't feel so good. Stand up here next to Alexander. What's your name? Anthony. Fuentes aplausos para Anthony. ¿Sabe qué? Alexander está aquí, él no tiene problemas, lo que estamos haciendo es regalando a Alexander problemas en cantidad y ahora se enfermó, oh, now he's sick, Alexander is sick, here Anthony represents all illnesses and sicknesses, could be COVID, could be a migraine, could be upset stomach, could be athlete's foot, you never know, how do you feel right now? So far, so good. He's not feeling too bad. What other problems might Alexander have? What, what problems do we want to give you? Did, you? did you say family problems? I thought you said that. Yes. Come on, right up here. He said family problems. Who, we all have family problems. What's your name? Chris. Give Chris a big round of applause. Stand next to Anthony on this side. Stand next to Anthony. Chris. Family problems, tension, struggles, difficulties between husband and wife, between parents and their children, children and their parents, all kinds of problems that we have in our families, right? Misunderstandings, pain, we cause each other pain, suffering and sorrow sometimes. It's not all bad, right? We have joyful, wonderful, happy moments. But the truth is, a lot of times there's misunderstandings, lack of communication, sometimes even lack of love in our families. And so... That could be a big problem. A veces encontramos en nuestras familias falta de amor, cariño, afecto, ¿no? Y encontramos tensiones y conflictos, desacuerdos. En la familia tenemos problemas. No solamente problemas de salud. Ya pobrecito Alexander tiene problemas de salud y tiene problemas de la familia. ¿Qué más? Vamos regalándolo también problemas. ¿Cómo? ¿Qué más? What other problems are we going to give Alexander? Did you say financial problems, miss? You did. Come right up, quick. Fast. Big round of applause. Financial problems. What's your name? Hmm? Lauren. Stand next to Chris. Give Lauren a big round of applause. Financial problems. Who, who ever thought you'd be applauding financial problems? But the truth is we all face them, right? The pandemic happened and all the prices went up and up and up. And did you notice they never came back down? They haven't. And so, whoever thought that you would have to take out a loan just to take your family out to eat? It feels like that because the cost of food and everyday necessities is going up and up and up. Laundry detergent. Just laundry detergent. A loaf of bread. A dozen eggs. A gallon of milk. Right there, you spent 50 plus dollars in the supermarket for four items, where before, maybe it was 15 or 20 dollars. And financial problems like what? We're trying to stretch every dollar. Make sure that we can pay all of our gas, electric, and heating. Make sure that we can pay all of the school needs of our children. Financial problems are all around us. You tell your kid, don't wear out those shoes. Shoes are a major investment. You know, don't wear out those school clothes. Clothes are a major investment. Not like it was before. How do you feel? You came here with no problems. Now you're sick. You got family problems. And not only that, you're bankrupt. How do you feel, Alexander? Still feeling pretty good. What other problems? I have other problems that we can regalar. What I heard somebody say? Problems with it within yourself? Come on up, hun. What's your name? Melissa. Give Melissa a big round of applause. <laughs> Go sit next to Lauren. So Melissa, she said it. Hey, you are cute. God bless you. <laughs> she is so cute. Melissa just said, you could just have problems within yourself in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, just the struggles that we all go through. Sometimes it's, it's sadness. Sometimes it could be depression. Sometimes you just feel numb and not feel anything at all. Sometimes 
You can be really angry, frustrated, and upset and not know what to do with that anger, that frustration, and that upset that fills you. Sometimes you just can feel empty. Just without energy, without strength, without a desire to do anything. Oh my gosh, Alexander. How are you? How are you? He's still smiling though, so... He's smiling on the outside, but on the inside we know he's sick, he's got family problems, he's got financial problems, and now he's depressed. La, la verdad es que este joven llegó aquí sin problema, feliz, contento y alegre, ahora se enfermó, tiene problemas en la familia, problemas financieros, y a la vez, dentro de él mismo, una depresión horrible, horrible, terrible. What other problems are we going to give him? Do you know what? That is a world problem. Come up here. What's your name? Parker. Give Parker a big round of applause. World problem. Stand over there next to Melissa. World problems. The high gas price is a world problem because people control the oil and gas markets and they make, just according to their women will, they want the prices to go up and down. I heard on the radio the other day that there is a summer blend of gasoline. Did you ever hear that before? And so that's why the price went up. That was the excuse. Oh, we're using the summer blend. It sounds like coffee. <laughs> we're having the breakfast blend for, for breakfast. That's our coffee. And now gasoline is suddenly like coffee and they can raise the price. Did you ever notice we're fine until there's a holiday and then the price goes up? Yeah. We're fine until it's Christmas or Easter or summer. The price goes up. It's a world problem, world markets, and they control the up and down of prices. Not just that, but world problems like war, war in Ukraine, world problems like hunger, people hungry all over the world, world problems like what? Poverty, tremendous poverty here and in some countries not so distant from here. Problemas en cantidad encontramos a nivel mundial. Guerra. Hambre, pobreza, falta de educación, forma de avanzar. No hay salud. Ese seguro que necesitamos para mantener bien nuestra salud, el, el, el seguro médico. Muchos problemas encontramos a nivel mundial. La guerra en Ucrania, por ejemplo. Wow, Alexander, you have broad shoulders, man. If you can hold all those problems. Because now you got the world's problems on your shoulders. How do you feel? You know what? This reminds me of something. Eso me hace recordar un juego que, que de niño jugamos siempre. This reminds me of a child's game. We used to play this as children. So what I'm going to ask you to do, you're going to need your hands free. So hand me your, your hand me your, this is, that's it. Okay? So you're going to take this side of the rope. Go ahead, everybody. Hands on deck. All hands on deck. Take, a, take, a, take the rope. And you know, Alexander, you're going to be on this side. And you're going to take this side. You're going to take this side. Don't pull yet. Don't pull yet. All right? And we're going to put this in the, uh, use our, our good old Target bag. Save these, please, because we can use them in the city of Baltimore. And put our Target bag right on there. All right. You seen this before? Are you? Oh, he's ready to go. He's ready to go. Alexander's ready to go. He came here with no problems. Now he's got problems. He's got what? Health problems, family problems, financial problems, problems within himself. And he's got world problems. All right? This reminds me of tug of war. So on your mark, get set. Wait, don't go yet. <laughs> Who's going to win here? Kim Baganai. Who's going to win? The problems. The problems are going to problema para ganar. The problems are going to win. Right? How often have you felt like that? How often have you felt just like Alexander, how he is right now? Es posible que en su vida ha pasado momentos así, sintiéndose en la guerra, en la tira y jala en contra de los problemas. Y solito, solitario, sin nada, sin nadie ahí en contra de los problemas. It's possible that in your life you felt like this. 
You against the world. You against problems. You against maybe illness, a serious illness, your own or somebody else's. Maybe you felt like this in the tug of war against financial problems or serious family struggles and difficulties. Maybe the world's problems are weighing you down. Or maybe just within yourself, you feel very much alone, like no one's with you, no one's there to help you, that you have no one on your side. Alexander, you got nobody on your side, buddy. Are you going to win? Oh, he really wrapped that rope around his arm. <laughs> so what, what does Alexander need? This, this is... This, <laughs> that's very good. Actually, it's why we're here today. It's why we're here today. What's your name? Emily, come up here. Give Emily a big round of applause. Emily. Emily, what are you going to receive today in this sacrament? And the Holy Spirit gives you what? Seven gifts. You are knowledge. And so we're going to give Alexander knowledge. Give knowledge a big round of applause and take a hand on the rope. What's your name? Christian. Stand up, Christian. You are wisdom of the Holy Spirit. Get up there next to knowledge, wisdom. And you are? What's your name? Jose. Jose, stand up, buddy. You are fortitude, strength. Get up there, fortitude. You have to move in just a little bit more. Move in just a little bit closer. Give fortitude a big round of applause. Jose is strong. How are you feeling right now? You feeling a little bit better? Against the problems? You have some people on your side. You got the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Knowledge, wisdom, fortitude. What comes next? Piety. You look very pious. Come on. You look pious is holiness. What's your name? Tommy. Get up there. Give Tommy a big round of applause. Yes, sir. Tune in just a little bit closer. Give Tommy a big round of applause. You got knowledge, wisdom, fortitude, piety. I saw counsel there. Counsel. Come on up. What's your name? Cameron. Cameron, counsel. Get up there. Give him a big round of applause. <laughs> knowledge, wisdom, fortitude, piety, counsel. You look very understanding. What's your name? Paige, get up there. Paige, get up there. She's very understanding. Give her a big round of applause. And the gentleman on the end, what's your name? What's your name? Ethan, come on up. Big round of applause. Reverence and all, holy fear of the Lord. Knowledge, wisdom, fortitude, piety, counsel, understanding. And what happened to the fear of the Lord? <laughs> We're missing the fear of the Lord. How about Ethan's sponsor? We'll take you. Come on up. Give a big round of applause. Big round of applause right at the end there. Alexander, how are you feeling? Pretty good right now. Pretty, say that again. We're going to win. That's what he said. And, and that's what happens when we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Él ahora tiene los dones del Espíritu Santo, ¿no? En cantidad, los siete dones. Él en contra los problemas, él va a ganar. Él me decía ahora, voy a ganar. I'm going to win, he said. He's got the Holy Spirit on his side. Knowledge, wisdom, fortitude, piety, counsel, understanding, holy fear, reverence, and awe in God's presence. You get the gifts in the sacrament of confirmation so that you can live a happy, healthy, and especially a holy life. And the gifts are given to you to use on your mark. Get set. Wait a minute. <laughs> Know the gifts. Candidates, know the gifts. Because someday you are going to have serious problems. Life is like that. God doesn't give us problems. It's just part of life. We have problems, struggles, and difficulties. It happens. And you know what? God gives you the gifts. Knowledge, wisdom, fortitude, piety, counsel, understanding, holy fear, reverence, and awe in God's presence. Why? So that we can live happy even in the midst of problems. Healthy, even in the midst of problems, and holy, even in the midst of our problems. La vida se nos hace difícil, es la verdad, así es la vida. Nos complica, nos dificulta siempre las cosas. Pasan problemas siempre, ¿no? 
Y Dios nos ofrece la respuesta, la solución, el remedio. Siete dones del Espíritu Santo para ayudarnos a vivir, no solamente felices, contentos y alegres, sino santos, salvos. Felices, contentos, alegres, santos y salvos. Dios nos ofrece siete dones del Espíritu Santo para nuestro bien. Entonces tenemos que saber cómo usarlos, ¿no? Ponerlos en acción. So know the gifts and especially know how they work. Because life is hard. And true happiness is found in this life in the Lord and with the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he gives us. Each and every one of us who is confirmed. Seven gifts. The number seven in the church is symbolic. If you look through sacred scripture, the number seven is, is a beautiful number. It's perfection, completeness, and wholeness. Did you hear the gospel today? The number seven is in the gospel today. It's hidden. Did you know that? How many gifts of the Holy Spirit do you have, Alexander? How many gifts of the Holy Spirit do you have? Seven. It's perfection. You have completeness and wholeness, all the gifts that you need. But more than that, if you look at today's gospel, the woman who's at the well, remember her? Jesus says, give me a drink. And then he says, what? Go call your husband. And she says, I don't have a husband. He said, that's right. He said, you had five. And he says, and the one that you have now is not your husband. And so there's seven men in that woman's life. Interesting, right? Who's the seven? Jesus. Jesus. And it's hidden. It's a hidden number seven in there to say, Jesus is perfectly going to complete her life and bring her happiness, fulfill, fulfill, fulfillment, holiness, all that is good. All that she looked for in life, she couldn't find until she met Jesus. And he fulfilled her every wish, hope, and dream for herself because Jesus is perfection. And he shares himself with us perfectly through the gifts of the Holy Spirit for our good, for our happiness, for our well-being, and most, of, most importantly, for our sanctification. That we be holy as our God is holy. On your mark, get set. Okay, drop the rope. Give him a big round of applause. Good job. Take a seat, everybody. Take a seat. Solo en Jesús encontramos la verdadera paz, amor, bienestar y felicidad, santidad en abundancia. Jesús es la perfecta expresión del amor del Padre para nosotros todos y eso recibimos en los siete dones del Espíritu Santo en los siete dones que ustedes mismos van a recibir hoy en el sacramento de confirmación confirmation candidates I'm going to ask you to do three things the first is this remember this day mark it on the calendar and every year celebrate your confirmation anniversary what's today's date? I thought today was the corned beef and cabbage dinner for St. Patrick's. <laughs> today is what? March 12th. March 12th. Mark this day on your calendar. And every March 12th, celebrate. Celebrate. Say, Mom and Dad, let's go out to eat. Hey, Mom and Dad, I've been really good. Maybe five, 10, 50, maybe a 50. Most importantly, on the anniversary of your confirmation, remember the gifts you've received and ask yourself, am I using them? Am I putting them to good use? Am I calling on the gifts when I need them? Am I using them? And if you are, great, keep going. If you're not, it's time to get back on track. Use the gifts. Use the gifts for your good, for your benefit, and for the good of your brothers and sisters in the church. The second thing is this. You did service projects. You did ministry and service in preparation for the sacrament, some of you. What you did is preparation for the sacrament of confirmation. Keep doing it. Make it part of your everyday Catholic living. Don't stop doing it. Keep going. Make ministry and service an ordinary, routine part of your life. What you did is a project. Make a promise now that you're going to commit yourself to serve and help out your brothers and sisters in the church. And you might say, well, how can I serve? What can I do? Well, Monsignor Hardin is here, Father John Strife is here, Deacon Paul. If you're not sure what to do, ask them. I'm sure they could give you a list of things that they need done in the church. All right? Or maybe you could be a peer minister next year. 
Or maybe you could help out as an assistant to one of the catechists in faith formation here at St. Clair's. Give yourself in service. Those who read today in the Mass, please stand, our, our readers today, our lectors. Stand up. Our lectors, please stand. Please stand, our lectors. Give them a big round of applause. You are awesome. I hope it's not the first, and it better not be the last time that you read in church. Get them up there every Sunday. They did awesome. Give them a big round of applause. You were great. Thank you for proclaiming God's word. It was wonderful. Proclaim the word. Serve as an usher. Help clean the church. There's so much you can do. Give out food in the food cupboard, the food pantry. Help out in so many ways. The last thing I want to ask you to do is this. Never do anything. Never take any decision. Never do anything. Take any action that would separate you from Jesus and his church. Things happen in life. There are problems. There are struggles. There are difficulties. What happens is we blame God and say, why is God doing this to me? Why is God punishing me? God's not. But God gives us everything we need, not just to, to survive, but to thrive in this world and to be happy, healthy, and especially holy. And he gives us the gifts. He gives you the gifts just for that purpose. So stay close to Jesus, especially to Jesus in the Eucharist. Never stay far from him, because Jesus loves you. He wants to be close to you always. And today he looks at you, each one of you candidates says, we're going to do great things together. I give you the gifts. I give you the gifts, and together we're going to do great, awesome, and wonderful things. I hope I'm around 5, 15, 25, even 30 years from now to see what you do with the gifts. Because this is a great moment. God looks at you and says, we're going forward from this moment together. I gave you the gifts, and we're going to work awesome wonders. We're going to do marvelous things, awesome, great, and wonderful things. Magnificent things are in store for you. This is a wonderful moment. Use the gifts and do awesome, great, and wonderful things for Jesus and for your brothers and sisters in the church. Candidates for confirmation, please stand. On the day of your baptism, your parents and godparents brought you into church. Some of, some of you, they carried into church as babies or as little ones. And in your name, on your behalf, they made the profession of faith. We ask you now, in your own words, for yourself, to make that same profession of faith through the renewal of baptismal vows that renewal of baptismal promises that were made for you, you now make for yourself. And so as you hear the questions asked, the answer is simple, I do. I do, that's the simple answer. But ask yourself, do I really? Do I really love this faith? Do I really want to live it? Do I want to share it with others? Am I willing to defend it? Obviously you are, or your pastors, and your catechists, your parents and sponsors wouldn't be saying that you're ready. You're obviously ready. But as you hear the questions asked of you today, ask yourself, do I really love this faith? Do I live it? Do I fight for it and defend it? Most of all, do I share it with others so they might also know the love of Jesus in their lives?